What's up, fam? Happy New Year! Welcome back to the Well That's Good podcast. Thanks for joining us for another year. I can't believe we're in 2022, and I don't know about you, but things just feel good. I just have a lot of expectancy for this year. I think it's gonna be awesome. We're coming fresh out of passion and just good things going on. I'm so excited to start this podcast off. Normally, we do this together, but I'm actually interviewing the one and only Christian Huff. What, what? How to score this? I don't even know in life and on the podcast, but I'm so excited. Um, we actually got to talk about the podcast he just came out with in December for a men. So yeah. congrats, babe, on your podcast. Thank you. I feel uh, blessed to be on this platform and share my platform. Hey, that's awesome. There teamwork makes a dream work. There we go. It makes the dream work. Well, I think it's awesome that you're speaking to men. And th- it's about time for a good men's ministry to just pop up. I think it's awesome. It is. Yeah, we, we have thrown around some LO bros here every now and then. But I'm thankful to be able to do something just specifically for men and women are... I guess invited as well, but it's definitely targeted towards men. So yeah, I think it's awesome. Yeah, I used to always tell Christian that like, you should start Hello Bro, and uh, you know that wasn't a fit, but you had your own calling, and I think it's awesome that you're stepping into it. Okay, so my question for you is a question I ask everybody on this podcast, but a little different because your podcast is on faith and fitness. So what is the best piece of fitness advice that you've ever been given? I love that. Are you going to say, whoa, that's good after I, after well, I give hey, it? hey, don't put the pressure. Only not, if it is I'm good. Right, well, I only hopefully. say, well, that's good if it's actually good. So you've never not said, well, that's good on the podcast? No, I always say, well, yeah, that's okay. good. It's I, always I, good. I, I, it's always good. <laughs> there has to have been someone that you're like, eh, it's not as good as others. Well, sometimes um, I don't say, well, that's good right after the first piece of advice. But within the podcast, at one point, I will say, well, there that's good. There you go. Good. Or well, that's that's okay. Well, that's well, that's well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, well, actually, I would say, and this is not just a plug for the podcast, but um, the best piece of advice I would actually say was given on the first episode of the podcast by Adam Clink, and he said, um, "Train for performance and not for aesthetics." Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I thought that was just a really powerful thing because that's kind of why, um, you know, it's not the root of why I wanted to start it, but it's kind of a lot of the backbone behind like you know, wanting to encourage young men to train physically and not just about it from the um, aesthetic standpoint and not from looking good, you know, without a shirt on and just all those different things. But it's really just to, um, you know, to be healthy and to perform well. And um, because I feel like that those have spiritual implications as well. Yeah. Um, So just every time I go into the gym, if I'm thinking about, you know, not trying to look better, but trying to and improve on lifts that I want to get better at yeah. and the, that idea of performance. So I really lo- awesome. love that quote. So That's so good. Yeah. Okay, so I know most of your story, but I'm going to act like an adult and just ask you questions. Um, so don't feel like I'm prying. Even I would ask you this even if I didn't mm-hmm. know, but has there been seasons of your life where you feel like you definitely have trained more for like aesthetics than for performance? Because 100%. Yeah, I mean, that's a temptation for everybody, I feel like. Yeah, 100%. I think it's a fine line, but how do you find, how did you find that balance in your own life and how did you come out of that season of training purely for looks rather than training for like actual strength and stamina and whatnot? Yeah, that's good. Um, well, I grew up playing all kinds of sports, so I always grew up, you know, being physically active and, um, you know, training and working out and doing all those things. Um, when I got to college my freshman year, um, I didn't work out too much. I kind of thought that like every day I'd walk probably about a mile to campus. So I kind of thought that that was like my idea of like oh, a I workout. I totally count that. And it, there was like a lot of stairs and I was like, you know, I'm getting a workout. Like I'm walking probably about a mile, mm-hmm. mile and a half every day. I'm going up and down stairs. Um, but then I just like got out of shape. Uh, you know, physically, like like ath- aesthetically speaking, I guess I just kind of got out of shape looking. So I really got into like started running a lot more and really got into fitness. And then um, probably about middle way through my sophomore year of college, I think I was working out like six or seven days a week, yeah. and uh, probably like seven days a week. Um, and I was like only eating like chicken, broccoli, and brown rice and sweet potatoes and all those things. I wanted to like. I really wanted to look like a movie star, I guess you could say, if I'm just being honest. Um, and I just got so miserable with it. I ended up like resenting the gym and like hating going. Um, 
and I just kind of kept forcing myself to do it. And I kind of neglected some friendships because I was so, you know, focused on, you know, being healthy and eating what I wanted to eat that I kind of like, you know, stopped going out to eat with friends and all those different things because they would go to places that wouldn't have, you know, what I wanted to eat, so to speak. Um, I remember one day, uh, I can't really remember where I was, but I was like, I'm going to not work out for a while. And I remember I took off, like, I don't really know how long, but I didn't work out for, like, a while. Um, it was probably, like, six months or so. Six or six months, maybe something like that. And I was like, I'm just not going back to the gym for a while. Because I was like, yeah, I'm just miserable. I hate this. Um, so then I found, then I got in, like, a healthy routine of, like, getting to go with friends. I got to go with, you know, Parker and Riley, some of my good friends back in Auburn. Um, we created this healthy schedule of, like, you know, not that it's about, um, you know, overworking yourself and all these different things, but finding that balance of like how to actually be physically healthy and spiritually yeah. healthy and do those things. So I think we'd work out, you know, maybe three days a week, four days a week, maybe, and actually have like a healthy routine to it. And it became fun going to train with other people and good guy friends, especially. So that was kind of my thing. Um, and I feel like a lot of people tie into that of like, I'm going to go train for aesthetics, which is what I did for a while. Um, and, at the end, you end up, one, not really looking like what you want to look like, and you end up just not enjoying it. So that's just kind of my story with that. Friends, if you're looking for a new devotional book to do in your new year, I hope you consider my new one, Live on Purpose. I think that you'll love it. I think that it'll help you truly live on purpose, the purpose that God has for you. And I'm not saying that because I wrote it. I'm saying that because I lived it, because I lived this message of having to learn what it looks like to live on purpose. So go check it out. Let me tell you some things that you could actually learn from this book. You can work on overcoming fear and living with confidence. You can work on living without limitations by setting aside fear and anxiety and comparison. You can start authentically celebrating every moment of your life, dreaming big and living like life is on purpose because it is. There's four purposes on purpose. That's my word of the year to do things with purpose, purposeful things. And I'm so excited. So go check out my new book, Live on Purpose. It's available everywhere books are sold right now. And you can actually check out walmart.com or your local Walmart for an exclusive edition with bonus content. So go check out my new book, Live on Purpose. It's available everywhere books are sold. I think a lot of times like when you look back at like the root of where things went wrong it's like whenever we got obsessed with self like when self was at the center of our motive you know that's typically never a good um, starting point because all you can do is feed yourself it's selfish you know Mm -hmm. and for you it became so about like me what I look like myself and you might think well how can fitness be anything other than that well when you're strong and when you're healthy and whenever you and even for you that's a time where God really you know I feel like that's like your encounter time with the Lord and so it actually can be done for more reasons than just self or just looking good or just whatever you're you're strong for our family Mm -hmm. you sometimes I can't lift honey's car seat and put it in the car and you do like sometimes sometimes because when you're not there I do it yeah I do it but But I'm just saying like it actually is for others you know it actually is a way that you give to our family um one thing that I've walked you carry the bags in the airport I mean Genuinely, you being healthy you reap, for our you, family. You reap some of the benefits. I right? reap a lot of benefits. You reap a lot of benefits. I do. Right? I'm blessed, highly favored. Everybody, go be a 4 8 man. <laughs> the girls will dig you. Uh, that is a plug because that is just that's just true. I actually believe in his mission because, like, genuinely, your fitness and your health has served our family, and I'm really thankful for that. Um, one thing I have walked with you through that has been hard is that you did go through a season where you trained for aesthetics and you and you looked good. Like you you looked great. You did look like a movie star. You trained really hard to do that and you did. And but you weren't healthy. So it doesn't matter. Therefore, it's just whatever. However, so many people I've heard reference that time of your life as like, oh, dude, you used to be so jacked. Oh, your sophomore year of college. Which I would say, I'm, I'm way more. Well, okay, yeah, okay, but, yeah. but okay, yeah. that was before you got like this. When we started dating and when we were early married, you weren't like this yet. And you kept like, it was hard because people kept saying to you, 
oh, your sophomore year of college, like, that was the most jacked you've ever been. You were ripped. Oh, remember what your abs looked like? Your arms were huge. And it was, like, always back to, like, that. Like, I remember even on our honeymoon, we had this great picture, and I was like, you look so good. And someone was like, well, you should have seen him his sophomore year of college. And it's like, that doesn't make you feel good because it's like, actually you look great and you are healthy and i think sometimes like we think that the temptation is going to be to compare ourselves to other people but a lot of times we compare ourselves to other versions of ourselves. Mm-hmm. and i think that's even sometimes the hardest thing mm-hmm. is when we see a season of our life we were in that we thought we looked better in and i think but but we were unhealthy and mm-hmm. i think for me like there was a time in my life where i've shared that i was unhealthy with my eating and my thinking and but that was the time that i was the most fit or skinny or whatever and so many people complimented me on that time that for a while like I was like well the only way to get back to that is to be unhealthy again and Mm -hmm. that temptation to do that even though I didn't want to and so how did you handle those comments and um, that season of your life because I feel like a lot of people are go through that like maybe there's a time they were super fit and right now they're not as fit and people say stuff or people's comments are saying stuff but how do you like find contentment with where you're at Mm-hmm. Do you mean like in that space? Like we're... I think in that, I mean, in that yeah. space, you can talk about any space, but I think yeah. just finding contentment with where you're at because you could always compare yourself to another space. Yeah, 100%. Well, I mean, I think like even when I look back at like something like that, like, so I feel like if you just acknowledge that, even like with a comment like that, like, yeah, I was in better shape then. But like you don't like linger on that and you don't like, and I, I know that's easier to say like, you know, don't let that get to you or whatnot. But like, I think at that point in my life, I was in a healthy spot of like, I can actually, like I can acknowledge that at that point in my life, I was in the best shape. Like, and I didn't need someone to like reference that because I already knew that. Mm -hmm. And I think even just by acknowledging it and saying, you know, yeah, you're right. But like, I was in a healthy spot enough to where I was like, I just didn't really care. Like, But also I think one thing that helped you is like, you can acknowledge that yes, you were in better shape then, but you are happier then. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes like people think, oh, well, if you're in better shape, then you'll be happier because then you'll be more confident. And that's not true. I would say you were more confident on our honeymoon being mm-hmm. fully you who you were, being married, being a God-fearing man, than you were sophomore year of college, still figuring things out, mm-hmm. eating sweet potatoes and chicken every day, mm-hmm. not going out with friends. Like that wasn't fulfilling. Mm-hmm. Like it was maybe fruitful <laughs> in a worldly sense. Yeah, you were yeah. you were strong. You were buff. You yeah. had a eight pack. I'm assuming. No, <laughs> easy, easy. You were super fit, but even though now you now you are very fit, but at the time not maybe as much. Even though you still were insanely fit, you were happier. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the thing people have to realize that there are going to be seasons in your life that physically you change, outwardly you change, but inwardly, there's a word say like outwardly, you, you know, you're changing, but inwardly like you're being renewed and like that inward sense is what really matters. And that's why for a men is powerful because you're saying that actually while physical training is of some value, godliness is a value in every way because even when you're physically unfit even when you get hurt even when you have an injury even whenever you're out for a season even when you're pregnant or going through postpartum no matter what it is if your heart is in the right place you can be happy you can be content you can be healthy you can be strong Mm -hmm. even if your body's not capable of doing those things at the time Mm -hmm. you know yeah well and that's that's what's even cool about the verse because after paul says that he says holding present for or he said, holding value for the present life and the life to come. So it's that idea of like how we train ourselves spiritually is eternal. Like mm-hmm. I can get as buff or as in good shape or as whatever you want to say here physically, but that's not transient to, you know, to heaven, to, to eternal life. But what I do for myself spiritually, that is going to translate yes. for that life, you know, um, in a sense. And, um, I think that's what Paul was trying to make that reference of like, don't get so consumed with that. Um, and I, it's just even fun to think about. Like, I think someone was on a podcast recently and was like, do you think Paul was like doing pull-ups? And I was like, it's just such a like interesting thing to like think about Paul, like doing push-ups or pull-ups like before he's just going to preach the gospel. <laughs> um, but it was, just, it was a funny thought, but, um, 
But I think it's just so cool. I love that verse. That it's kind of where the whole thing started. First Timothy four eight. Yeah. Growing up, I think we can all agree that cereal was one of the best parts of childhood. But then when you get older, you're like, oh shoot, that has so much sugar in it and I no longer can participate in the fun, sugary cereal life that I always did whenever I was a kid. But guess what? Fun's not over because there is a company called Magic Spoon and they make the most amazing cereal that is super, super great for you. And y'all, it's just awesome. I have to read you the facts because this is just crazy. It has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each servings with only 140 calories per serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. It's so awesome because you can build your own box, have fun with it they have so many flavors like cocoa fruity frosted peanut butter blueberry cinnamon cookies and cream and maple waffle it's so awesome i personally tend to like the more fruity ones and i just think that they are so delicious i also love that on the back of the box there's always this fun little game so christian and i like to play it you literally feel like a kid again while getting to eat cereal but living a healthy lifestyle go to magicspoon.com woe to grab a custom bundle of cereal and start your your new year off right and be sure to use my promo code woe at checkout to save five dollars off your order remember get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash woe and use my code woe for five dollars off at checkout okay so now you are in probably the best shape of your life you are huge obviously you look great you're killing it but what's the difference now than when you were in college and you look great like how did you start back the training process because you said you took some time off the gym how did you start back in a healthy way because I think some people have done the fitness thing they did it unhealthily they got an eating disorder or they you know got way too over working out or they Mm -hmm. just have an unhealthy view of fitness in the gym and you were there but how do you get back and do it in a healthy way Mm -hmm. that's good well I feel like for me like and at that period like it was the self-consuming idea of like I want to do this because I want to look like Chris Simsworth I want to be buff and jacked and I want to be really like like when summer comes on to look with a shirt on, like just from a worldly speaking sense. Um, and even at that time I was, I was a strong believer. So like you can still have, you know, misconceptions on things like that and still be pursuing things of God. Um, and honestly, like really for me from it was, it's, it's been like transition periods. Like, so from that period, it transitioned to like trying to make it a point to work out with my good guy friends. Mm-hmm. And then out of, the out of the fitness side training in the gym we'd have good spiritual conversations mm-hmm. and then when we started dating it was almost like a transition period of like i'm still doing that with my good guy friends but there's also this underlying thing of like if we progress and keep getting serious about our relationship i want to be able to protect you physically um so then that's become like a byproduct of like some 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 training of like if anything ever, you know, goes sideways, I would ideally like to be able to protect you. And now we have a daughter. So that's another thing of like, you know, and that's not obviously the root of anything, but it's like, it's a, it's a nice Part thought. It. It's a nice yeah. thought of like, if anything ever happened, like I want to be able to take care of my family physically. Um, and then it just got to where like after that period when I wasn't training with f- friends or whatever, and I still do this now, I could only really listen to worship or um, podcasts or sermons. I want to say podcast, I mean a sermon on a, on the podcast, um, because and that's what I talk about a lot on all the podcasts that I do. Um, that's just become my routine because I know that if I fill my mind with other things, like it's it's almost like that idea of like if I'm going to work out and I'm lifting heavy weight and I'm like pumping Drake or something, I will be a I feel like far more prone to like check myself out in the mirror. Like what, I, what I, what do I look like? Cause it's like you're pumping worldliness into your, yeah. into your, your, your mind kind of thing. Um, so for me, it's just helped to every time I go train physically, like I'm trying to do spiritual stuff while I'm training. physically. Yeah. That's awesome. So it's been like transition things of like, why am I training? It's I'm your training. intention. Yeah, it's your like, intention's different. Yeah, like train with friends. I trained to, I wanted to work out to, 
be in good shape to protect you. And then we got married and things, you know, that's a, another element of seriousness for protection or, you know, now with honey. So it's just all the, I think it's awesome. Different things, so, yeah. It's awesome. I think it's really awesome to have a husband who I know is strong and who is uh, not only strong naturally, but actually like physically pushing yourself to be stronger. I think that's an amazing thing. And mm-hmm. you are so committed. Like you, you commit when you do it you commit to it and you were like that in a relationship too and i think that that is a lost art in the world today is just committing to something because people think oh well, if it's not happening for me then move on to the next thing oh if i'm not seeing progress move on to the next thing oh i'm never going to be good at this move on but there's something to committing. I mean, mm-hmm. truly, you're not going to reap the benefit or the reward that is there for you to receive if you don't commit to the process, you know? Mm-hmm. And so what do you feel like um, the power of commitment has really been in your life all around? That's good. Um, well, I think that just comes like I'm a very disciplined person. Um, like I'm a one on the Enneagram, which I know that's not my identity. But I'm like by nature, like I like to schedule things. I like to plan things. I like to do, like I like to have a plan. I like to be disciplined. It's like out of that discipline comes that idea of like when I want to commit to something, I'm going to commit to it. And I feel like that's that comes with, like I said, the discipline thing. Um, but I mean, I just really feel like when you, um, I don't know, like when you commit to something that you really get to reap the benefits of it. Because I feel like if you don't commit, then it's kind of like, you know, you're not fully engaged in it. And I think even just for seasons, like there are more seasons where I feel like I might be committed to certain things than other things. Mm But I feel like I just, that's just my personality type of like, when I do something, I want to go all in on it. And, um, I don't like to half, but anything. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) and you don't, and I think it's awesome. You've inspired me. Well, now nah, I'm in the gym. Yeah, I've been, been working up out. in the gym, just working on my fitness. He my witness. Hey, you, 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 you've trained four times this week. I know. Look, I'm Look starting to see. Oh, what? That's, that's what? That, that's I that see. I see a hill. That's the I commitment. see a hill. Okay. Um, well, I feel like even even like consistency. Like Adam, he's like I said, he was the first guest on my podcast. He had that good piece of advice. But even his thing with like just all about consistency. And I feel like if you commit to consistency like that helps you stay committed like because yeah. it's easy to be committed to something when i feel like you have a consistent plan or something yeah or if you have a goal like for yeah. me like my goal right now is to do one pull up do one pull up without 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 assistance or assistance yeah i'm not there yet but that has literally kept me like wanting to be consistent because i know that i am not going to be able to do that without consistency mm-hmm. i know i have to consistently train muscles in my body that I don't typically train to do that Mm -hmm. and so yeah it it keeps me going it keeps me excited um even my trainer is like such a godly woman and she keeps me motivated and excited to do it my friends and literally picking honey up in that car seat keeps me motivated and inspired Mm -hmm. because I'm like I want to be able to do that easily like I want to be able to like you know when she's however old just like be able to carry her around and run around with her and play with her and still do backflips on the trampoline and still play tennis with her at a competitive level and so like i know if i want to be that mom then i have Mm -hmm. to consistently train and um so yeah like i think your intention going into these things is everything um and if we have a son you'll see me and him playing tackle football hey maybe i'll be playing tackle you might be (laughs) be more scared of me it'll be you and honey versus me and Son. Son. <laughs> Son. Good job. You didn't throw Thank you didn't you. throw out our potential uh, name yeah. for a boy one day. And this is not saying that we're pregnant. No, we're not pregnant. We're, Happy New Year. We're definitely not pregnant. And wait for the surprise at the end of the show. It's no, just kidding. It's not there and it's not yeah. that. Okay, I have a question for you. Um sorry, I lost my train of that. No, I wanted to ask you because I think this is a cool story for people to know because sometimes you get things started and you never tell the backstory on how it happened. Mm -hmm. How did you even start for eight men? Because, you know, I think people might say, oh, well, Sadie has a podcast, just made sense for him to do it. Mm -hmm. And you weren't, like, you've never been like, I want to do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You've never been like, I want to start a podcast or I want to have a ministry or I want to speak. You've always been like, hey, I want to serve the vision of our family. Mm -hmm. I want to help with yours. I want to help, you know, 
with honey and you and I want to train for our family and I'm going to be there and I'm going to help you with your messaging and you've always just kind of been that person to come alongside the vision of our family um, and I feel like this kind of came really out of the blue and was something that might have even been outside of your comfort zone but I think it's so cool how this all happened. So I told you a little bit earlier about Helix Sleep and how awesome it is. Like I said, you can go online, take a two minute quiz and it'll match you to the perfect mattress for you based on your body type, based on your sleep preferences, based on how you sleep at night. It's so awesome. One cool thing is that, you know, if you're married and you sleep with your spouse and it's really great because you can take the quiz with your spouse. So Christian and I could take it together and make sure that it matches both of our preferences, which might be kind of hard to do because we sleep totally different, but actually we found a great mattress for us. We actually got the Helix Midnight mattress, which is so great because I don't really like too firm or too soft. It's a great mattress for us. It's a huge upgrade. It fits the preferences that, you know, we locked in on that quiz. And so we really liked it. We have Honey that sometimes snuggles in bed with us. We have our dog that jumps up on our bed. There's plenty of room. Also, they're going to make sure that they get every detail. So whether you sleep on your back, your stomach, your side, um, whether you um, are a cool sleeper, like you get really cold at night or you get really warm, whether you're a plus size sleeper, wh whatever you are, like they can match a mattress just for you. If you like firm, if you like soft, if you like comfy, you get the point. This mattress is going to be a fit for you. Um, they have so many great reviews online. They've been actually voted number one best overall in Wired Magazine in 2020 and just recommended recommended by so many people, not only just like fans, but also even chiropractors who say this is so great for your spine alignment and all of those things. So that's just great to know that while you're sleeping, you're actually sleeping on a mattress that isn't making you temporarily feel good, but it's actually really good for you in the long run too. You can just go to helixsleep.com slash Sadie, take their two minute quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that best fits your life. This is also so great. They have a 10 year warranty and you can get it and try it for a hundred nights risk free. Then they'll even come pick it up for you if you don't like it, which I mean, how nice is that. Helix also even has financing options and flexible payment plans so you can get a great night's sleep and not have to stress about the payment side of it as well. Helix is offering up to $200 off on all mattress orders right now and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Sadie. That's helixsleep.com slash Sadie for up to $200 off and two free pillows. So this was about a year um Maybe like a year and a half ago at this point, Sadie was speaking at an event in Corpus Christi. And we, um, after the event, the pastor and his family invited us to go to dinner. Um, and I was reluctant to go because Notre Dame was playing Clemson and I wanted to watch the football game. Which I always tell him, you have to just go to meals with people and be present because you you will. You'll be like, if you like want to watch a football game or you don't want that thing to eat, you're like, then I go. And I'm like, it's the fellowship, not the food. Yeah, We're well, still working on that. No, well, I would have been willing to go if so. We, I was like, okay, I will go, but let's pick a restaurant where I can like. There's the TV because like, you know they will play. They'll be playing the game. Um, it's the first game of the season. This that's that's a real event, but whatever. Um, and went to this really nice steak restaurant, and clearly they did not have TVs. So then I had like my phone plugged, you know, not plugged up, but you know, I had my phone on my lap, kind of just throughout the dinner, watching some highlights here and there of the game. Um. And later that night, we, we left dinner, and he texted me, excited to hear more about your sports ministry idea. And I thought it was, like, the weirdest thing. I was like, that's, you know, that's weird. I don't, we, I literally, the only sports reference we talked about was me wanting to watch the football game. Um, and I guess that I came across really passionate about wanting to watch that. Um, you did. So he texted me, excited to hear about it. And then the next day, he was like, yeah, like, you could do something, like, and you could have it off of the verse First Timothy four eight that talks about you know physical training being of some value and godliness having value for all things, and I kind of just didn't really think about it. Um, and then a few months went by, and I kind of just referenced back to that. So it all kind of was birthed out of that moment, just with that that the theme of that verse. But it originally started with the idea of like wanting to do sports camps for people um, from like a sport perspective like wanting to do like a um like a camp like an event kind of thing and it'd be a, it, it'd be a sporting event but having the gospel like that being the overall theme of it because mm -hmm. i was like if i if i think about my life growing up i never really really wanted to go to church camps 
but at these church camps you played sports at them like you play basketball flag football soccer frisbee whatever and i was like so what if you did like what if you reversed it towards like it's a sports camp that you happen to hear the gospel at so that's kind of how the whole thing kind of started and i was like i could do this a few times a year that'd be really fun um and then it, then it was kind of like well if that's ever the goal maybe i could start a podcast and i feel like since i kind of had that thought that I feel like I've just really been more focused on a lot of the fitness side of it instead of the sports side of it, in a, in a sense. Um, and even just going to the gym, the Lord's just opened a lot of doors for me to get to minister the gospel to people through fitness. Um, yeah, you've you've had so many like lunches that you've ended up having with guys sharing the gospel, just that you uh-huh. met in the gym who spotted you uh-huh. or whatever. And I think because you've started to see fitness truly as like your mission of like mm-hmm. where God has you, what you're called to do, like you see it with new eyes, like mm-hmm. you see it with purpose. And um, I haven't even told you this, but my word for the next year for this year, I guess, is purposeful. And like everything I do, it needs to have purpose behind it. There, it needs to be purposeful. So even if it's like a little thing, like I'm going to the gym, what's my purpose behind it? And just making Mm -hmm. sure that everything I do, I'm doing with like good intention. And I think that that's kind of been like a theme throughout this podcast of like, when you started doing this with purpose, when you started doing this with good intention, Mm -hmm. there's so much fruit that came with it. There's so much um, ministry that came with it. And that's to say that like, whatever your mission is, is also your ministry. You Mm -hmm. know, ministry is 24 seven job. Mm -hmm. For everyone, whether you're in ministry or you're not, if if you're a believer in Christ, you're on mission, you're doing ministry. And yeah. so I think that that is so cool. Mm-hmm. And it's so cool that that came from a little seed planet and that mm-hmm. pastor almost challenging you as in. So like, if you're so passionate about fitness, like how are you gonna use it for the kingdom? Mm-hmm. Now you did. Yeah. And I even talk about it with your dad a lot. Like it's just that idea, like when Jesus met Peter fishing, like he met Peter fishing because that's what Peter's job was. That's what his mission was. So it's even like with fitness, like it's, yes, it's a podcast, I guess, about fitness, but like, that's not, yeah. that's not, that's not it. Like it's a faith podcast that we kind of talk and do fitness about mm-hmm. or on kind of thing. Yeah. So it's like, how do you meet people in fitness? Like Jesus met Peter fishing, but then he said, I'm going to make you fisher of men. So it's like, how do you meet people in fitness and give them the actual mission they go to go, yeah. to go spread the gospel? And that's no matter what you do, guys, if you're a teacher, if you're an insurance person, if you work at the mall if you're a waitress if you're a college student like whatever you're doing ask yourself how can i do this with mission how can i do this on purpose how can i do this with intention behind it to love people well and to make disciples Uh so one thing i love about your podcast is at the end of your podcast you have a challenge you give people two two challenges actually Mm -hmm. a fitness challenge and a faith challenge Mm -hmm. and we're at the start of the new year people are making new year's resolutions new year's goals what are they gonna do for the new year and this is the time where everybody gets into fitness the gym memberships go super high Mm -hmm. and so if you could give people a challenge today you can do both if you have it off the top of your head but what would you say what would you say for your fitness challenge for the listeners Mm -hmm. in this new year and it can be broad it can be commit or whatever and what would you say for a faith challenge Mm -hmm. for this year that's good because everyone's challenging themselves at fitness and faith at the start of the year that's good um hmm i want to say my two kind of tying together but i feel like I don't know. You, you can maybe tweak some of it. Okay. But here's here, here's where I'm going. Because um, it's really, honestly, kind of the hope of my podcast and like kind of what I hope that people actually get from it. But that idea of like, so I challenge you that like if you go to train physically, you have to either, um, while you're training physically, do something spiritual. Like, so I would say listen to a worship song or listen to a sermon. Pray. Pray. Uh, maybe maybe have your Bible app open and after a set, read a chapter or read a verse or something. And if you don't want to do that, then if you go to work out, like let's say it's Wednesday and I'm going to go train and I'm going to go work out in the morning, then I have to do something the same day that I go work out. To where it's like you can't physical train without also spiritual training. That's good. So that's I good. think like that's... That's awesome. Because even like for me, it's like I can't I can't go train physically without having like a brief second of like what I'm actually doing for my soul. Well, because the thing is, people say, 
oh, I have no time to read the word, but they had two hours at the gym or an hour mm-hmm. at the gym and they had an hour of social media time audiobook. and they I mean, had all this stuff. And it's like, actually, while you're at the gym, that's a great time mm-hmm. to have time with the Lord. Mm-hmm. I love it. That's the thing. It can be like, listen to an audiobook, like a, a, some Christian audiobook, like read a Bible during a set, listen to a worship song, share the gospel with one person mm-hmm. at the gym. Like, it can be like, there's, there's so many different things that you can yeah. do to fill that time. It's like, awesome. You don't have to be listening to Drake or, you know, Future or uh, The Weekend. I don't know, I'm trying to think of. I don't really <laughs> listen to that stuff anymore. But someone like that. Like, you can yeah. have some positive spiritual, um, you know, faith things that you can implement. So It's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Thanks yeah. for challenging us, babe. This is a great, great conversation, and I'm so excited for people to hear it. I'm so excited for people to take on the challenge of being a 4-8 man, but also if you're a girl, because most of my audience is girls, like be 4-8 women. Like, be people mm-hmm. who care more about our godliness and our physical attributes. You know, the truth is we are made in the image of God, and that means so much more than just our uh, body image. That means so much more than just our physical appearance that is like a very powerful thing about who we are that we're made in the image of an almighty God who's so powerful and the amazing thing is our body is capable of doing so much more than just looking good it you know can have a baby for crying out loud you know you can um do so many ways you can run the race of life you can um pick people up when they're down you can hug people you can hold people you can sit with people walk with people um just do so much in your life protect people whenever you're a healthy person and so this is going to be a great year i hope you feel challenged but i also hope that you have um the just will to commit this year to being healthy um body soul mind spirit all the things because let me tell you whenever you do anything hard or anything worth value it's gonna take commitment there are gonna be hard days there are gonna be days when you just don't feel like it there are gonna be early mornings that don't you really don't want to get out of bed but that commitment and that consistency is going to reap so much reward and so have a great start to this year go out and get it and also get in the word. Thanks, babe, for being my first guest. Thanks for asking me to be your first guest. Love you.